What I've decided to do today is play with the encoder feature on the motors in factory I.O. If you take a look at this conveyor, if I right click on the conveyor, I can take a look at the configuration. I've set the motor to respond to an analog signal from the PLC. So I go anywhere from plus 10 volts to minus 10 volts on the motor. Zero would be stopped and minus 10 would be high speed reverse. I've also turned on the encoder feature. If I take a look at the configuration now, You can see I have a real output from the PLC for three conveyors here. I've got a central conveyor, I've got a conveyor on the left side of it, I have a conveyor on the right side of it. And all three of them are set for plus or minus 10 volts. I have two sets of indicator lights here. The yellow indicator lights show the actual position on the conveyor. The green indicator lights show the target position. That was just a little fun with indicator lights to give a better visual indication of what I'm doing here. The five lights in the center and the digital displays. My one display shows the target. My other display shows the actual position. Blue light as the box is in position. And then I have light for low speed and a light for high speed reverse. And low speed and a high speed in the forward direction or just right and left. To feed the position into the system, I'm using an old manual pulse encoder from a CNC machine. Every time I rotate one notch on the manual pulse coder, I count one in the simulation. I feed the output from the manual pulse coder to the high-speed counter inputs on the PLC. And for the counting on the encoder off the motor itself in the simulation, I just use a simple counting algorithm. So now as you can see, every time I move one notch on the manual pulse coder, I count one on my counters and the box moves forward by one. Okay, if you also notice it's only moving in the slow speed as indicated by the first light or I can go reverse slow speed as well. If I set the target greater than four from the set point then the box will move at high speed. Now on a real machine or a factory, I wouldn't necessarily move a box around on a conveyor using encoders, but this is a good example or a good way to play with encoders a little bit. Typically what I'd have is an in-position proximity switch and an approach proximity switch. As the box moves towards the approach proximity switch, I'd be high speed. As soon as I hit the approach proximity switch, I would jump down to low speed, and then in position I would stop. That way I can run the box at a fairly high speed between points and not have any position problems once I get to, the, uh, to where I want the actual box to stop. If I do this again, let's zoom into the panel a little bit so you can see the counts a little bit better. Okay, you can see my in position light, uh, what I call my left high speed, left slow speed, right slow speed, and right high speed indicators, plus my target and my actual. So as I move the manual pulse coder in the clockwise direction, one one discrete notch at a time, I go slow speed to catch up, the box moves to that position. To go a little bit further, goes to fast, and slows down and goes into position. Let's just bring my little indicator lights into view in the bottom there. They have overlapping comparators because you can't, you can only put so many lights on this display. That's why you get two sets on at any one time. It saves me the trouble of having to put in an extra set of lights. Anyway, I thought it was kind of a neat demonstration. And the manual pulse coder uses the high speed inputs on the PLC and the encoder off the motor itself in the simulation just uses a regular counter. Uh, just as a side note, this Eukner manual pulse generator is actually plus or minus 5 volts. Oh, sorry, I had that upside down there. Plus or minus 5 volts. I'm using the A naught and the B naught outputs of the manual pulse generator because the little converter circuit I've made here is actually an inverting circuit with a 5 volt regulator. There's the, uh, there's the cat sleeping all nice and comfortably. 
And of course that goes to the, it's a little bit hard to see there, flip that open. Goes to inputs 0 0.1 and 0, 0.0 for the A and B phase. I set that up as inputs to the high speed counter in the PLC configuration.